Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. It has been quite a while since I've done a director spotlight video. I've done 12 of these videos over the years uh, for the purpose of recommending movies for people who want to explore specific filmmakers. I'll include a link to the playlist in the description box below. I've already covered Yasujiro Ozu, Hiroshi Teshigahara, Kinji Fukasaku, Takeshi Kitano, Zhang Yumo, uh, Yasuzo Masubura, Kihachi Okamoto, Masahiro Shinoda, Hideo Gosha, Koji Wakamatsu, Shohei Imamura, and Juzo Itami. So that playlist also includes my 200 Japanese film recommendations from the last 100 years. So it includes all of them. But today, I'm here to recommend some movies from Shinji Aoyama, who began his feature-length directing career in 1996. After that, he stayed active in directing until 2020, and he unfortunately passed away just recently in early 2022. His filmography is not especially large, consisting of only about 15 feature-length movies, so a top five list feels uh, appropriate. So let's get to the list. Now my thoughts on each film will be very brief, primarily because this is a list video, not a review. And remember, titles for all the movies I discuss are listed in the description box below. I typically do not provide availability information in this particular playlist because most of these films I saw years ago. And availability has changed over time. This is one of those playlists I like to, I like to put together without being confined to availability limits. You know what I mean? My usual method for checking availability for these movies would be Google, so be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. <clears throat> Number five, Wildlife, 1997. This is a crime comedy drama, and all these films are Japanese. An ex-boxer, working for a pachinko parlor, gets caught up in a Yakuza conflict that he doesn't understand. If you're familiar with some of this director's other movies, one might expect a serious film with some psychological elements, and you would be completely wrong in that assumption. This is a quirky yet laid-back movie with a healthy dose of humor, and it gets even more amusing as it progresses. There's one chase sequence shot with that, uh, without edits, which is quite neat. Direction and camera work give this movie a bit of additional life, and uh, there are some lengthy scenes without edits. Some fun back-and-forth tracking shots, among other things. A lower budget affair, but unexpectedly fun. Number four, Backwater, 2013. This is a drama. A teenage boy lives with his father and his father's lover. He endures the dissatisfaction of residing in a low-income port town and witnesses his father's violent behavior towards women. Will the sins of the father carry on to the next generation in the bloodline? This is described by some as providing a chilling atmosphere in an adaptation of an award-winning novel, and that is mostly true. Pacing does meander a little bit, but it's still engaging due to the good performances and direction. Viewer note that this is quite, uh, has quite a bit of sexual content and some violence, so it's a bit more intense, but when all is said and done, it's uh, quite a good movie. Number three. Mike Yokohama, A Forest with No Name, 2002, a drama horror hybrid. A detective, played by Masatoshi Nagase, is sent to a remote resort uh, run by a suspicious group that might be brainwashing their residents. And he's there to find and bring back his client's daughter, played by Rinko Kikuchi. Now the atmosphere is very dense in this, as it takes place at a small resort in the middle of a forest during the colder seasons. Extremely hypnotic and relaxing presentation. Uh, Aoyama does a great job at establishing mood in this one, and there are a few mind games and psychology present. It's even a bit creepy at times. This is an odd movie that's enjoyable despite a glacial pace, and this is the fourth entry in the Mike Yokohama franchise. Number two, The Lakeside Murder Case from 2004. It's a drama. A former dropout, played by Koji Yakusho, and his wife visit a tutoring retreat to interview their daughter's possible acceptance into an elite high school. Unfortunately, a murder occurs, and dubious actions are subsequently taken by the characters. In this film, 
Aoyama certainly has his sights set on criticizing the Japanese educational system and the lengths to which parents will go to get their kids into the best schools. The result is a high-quality drama that should impress most viewers, even the ones who may dislike Aoyama's weirder titles. This one is uh, definitely more of a uh, mainstream film, but it de it's high-quality stuff. And my personal favorite Shinji Aoyama film is, not surprisingly, Eureka from 2000. It's a drama. After surviving a violent bus hijacking, a man, played by Koji Akusho, a girl, played by Aoi Miyazaki, and her brother, try to straighten out their lives and heal the emotional wounds. This is deliberately paced, with long takes and minimal editing, but it immediately engages you with a suspenseful opening and strong inner conflicts. The three plus hour runtime is not nearly as intimidating as it sounds, and once the viewer hits the dramatic setup point, but an hour in, there's a lot of entertainment value to be had with an effective blend of silent moments and meaningful dialogue. Yakusho and Miyazaki give outstanding performances, and the unique sepia tone cinematography is beautiful. So, those are my personal favorite Shinji Aoyama films. I could Definitely understand if people out there had different movies in their top five, like Sad Vacation or Helpless. I hope this list, though, can help some people find recommendations for, you know, uh, movies from this director if they're not familiar with him or his films. And if you've seen some of his films already, tell me your thoughts and what are your favorites in the, in the uh, comments section below. And as always, we will see you next time.